Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Montana Lifestyles podcast brought to you by Treasure State Lifestyles Montana magazine here at Western Art Week. So many amazing shows, so many amazing artists, and so much for you to see. So if you're not here, I'm going to try and find as many artists for you as I can. But the reality is, I, I don't know about you, James, but if I look at social media and I look at all the art that you do and that other people do, there is no way to see it in all of its glory unless you see it in person. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, first first hand is the only way to see it. Yeah. And see yeah. it in its full glory, yeah. you know. I have some really amazing friends, and I watch them post every single day, and then you see it in person, you're like, ah, you, you miss so much. And there is an emotion that hits you when you look at some art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, let me ask you about four years of your life that you've dedicated to art so far. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to painting, have you been painting longer than that? No, no. That pretty much, I, I started with the graphite. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you got some great graphite sketches. Pen pencil drawings, and, and then I just uh, did a little acrylic. Yeah. Um, we all do a little acrylic. We yeah. don't want to go right to the oil, do we? No, and then I, I found oil, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah, so. yeah. Now, did you did you like? I mean, obviously, we all go towards that acrylic because the dry time. Yep. You can clean your brushes with water. Yep. Dries fast. What got you to then switch to oil? <clears throat> I I think it fits my personality. Yeah. Because I'm okay with taking my paintings take considerable amount of time. Yes. So I'm and I'm okay with that. Yes. I'm okay with I have a little extra time to blend. And, yeah. And the blending process is different. It kind yeah. of fits my personality, I think. Well, and what you're doing with the Vermeer styles, as you're doing yeah. layering of all your paints one at a time, yeah. you can't do that with acrylic. No, no, it's hard. It's it's very yeah. difficult, and it dries too quickly. And, yeah. and so, I yeah, and it paintings take me a considerable amount of time, like yeah. I said, because yeah. there, there's layer upon layer upon layer upon yeah. layer, and sometimes, you know, 15, 20 layers. Yeah. Um, in areas. What were you doing before four years ago? Um, I've done a lot of different things. Um, I grew up on a cattle ranch okay. in Idaho. Yep. Um, and, and you're still in Idaho, right? I was a professional bull rider for after that at high school. Sheesh. Um, and uh, kind of ended that with an injury. So um, then I was in law enforcement after that. So now I'm a painter. <laughs> you're the bob ross man you're the bob ross of oil paints you know because uh, he's what was he a drill sergeant or something yeah, and suddenly yeah. he's he was in the military cute little trees <laughs> so you go from law what was it an escape because obviously law enforcement is such an incredible task yeah um i think you know i had no interest in drawing growing up right i right, was right wrestling football rodeo that rodeo, was rodeo yeah rodeo was it i lived and breathed it and yeah. and that was my focus for a lot of my life and so um i had a buddy and i did a lot of woodworking as well right on my okay. free time and a buddy of mine saw my woodworking and i uh, did a lot of stonework as well mm -hmm. and uh he said y you should try to to draw from from because you to drawing you are really good with this Huh. So I, I, I thought, you know, nah, you know, but after a while I gave it a shot and, and I really haven't looked back since then. So he saw your creative spirit. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of opened up some things for me and I, I, uh, I really liked it. So from athletics to artistics. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and it's a little easier on your body too. Slightly. Yeah. Slightly yeah. until your hand goes numb cause you've been painting for so long. <laughs> yeah. But no, that is incredible. And then now you're doing this full time. Yeah. yeah. Can, can, for a guy like me, who's like, wow, that would be really, really amazing to do that. And, and in the middle of your, the, your life, what is it like to go, you know what? Yeah, this has to be full time. Yeah. Well, I, 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 th I knew that because I started late in life, right. if I wanted to be really good, um, I had to devote everything to Full it. Full focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't be divided. I couldn't. Right. Because usually, you know, when you're working for someone else, um, you usually ended up in a supervisory position or something. Right. So right. that takes up all your time. Right. And I, I knew I couldn't do that. Yeah. So I just wanted to devote all my time to painting. And so Incredible. every waking moment is thinking about the next one and yeah. you know so the thing i noticed about your artwork is as and i always try to go and see the artwork before i sit down with the artist and and as i look at your stuff it's so incredibly smooth there is a uh, there is a, a translucency to it yeah um and and you're saying that's 
due to glazing, right? Yeah, I think glazing is part of it, but the other part of it is knowing um, your colors well enough to know yes. what's opaque and yes. what's transparent yeah. and, and using the correct colors. Yes. Um, How are you doing that and pulling that off, though, with the, like, the amount of hairs you got on the wolf that you have? Yeah, I, it, it starts with layers. You know, start. It's really an ugly process at first. <laughs> it really is an ugly Don't process. Don't you hate that? Trust the process. Yeah, phrase trust. Going, and I tell oh. myself, you know, as I'm painting, to trust the process. Oh. Because if you don't, you're going to be like throwing everything in the trash. Yes, yes, yes. Especially when you invest the amount of time that we invest. Yeah. So uh, now, painting that I absolutely love, I would call it your centerpiece of your show. In my opinion, as as my wife noticed it immediately, is a uh, Mitre Peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it is a piece that is absolutely gorgeous i love the, the the sky in it and everything like that but everything in it from head to toe is so detailed yeah yeah it's just a lot of layering in that painting wow it and and it's absolutely gorgeous and and i would say as i was looking at all of your pieces each one of them has that same detail all the way down to you stealing all your wife's uh stuff for still life as well yeah yeah so. actually that that was uh that still life piece is just a sketch of my studio i set up a you know the yep. stuff in my studio and just sketched it out and just painted it right there from from the she was from telling the me it's one of her favorites yeah you know? oh she loves it yeah it's awesome and, and that one was actually in the international guild of realism salon um and there's whoever purchases that painting is going to get a a magazine with it because it was in yeah it was, yeah. It was in the magazine. Crazy. Yeah, it was featured in the magazine multiple My times. My gosh, so. look at you go within four years. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of attention, and I feel I feel blessed to have have received the attention that I got so yeah. quickly. Yeah. Because you know a lot of them say you know ten years to get yeah, it up exactly up off the ground, and and uh, and most of those don't make it. Yes. Yes, you know, so yes. I feel blessed. Now, this is my first show. This is my first time showing any of my work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you for some sage advice. What do I need to be aware of of my first show as we're doing this? I think engage with people. Yeah. People want the story behind the piece. Yes. You know, and and that that's kind of my whole business philosophy is uh, telling the stories of the American West. Yeah. One painting at a time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you find what you love. And those stories, you know, they, they want a connection with with you the artist yeah and uh they want to know that you're you're accessible yeah and you're gonna you know? stick with it absolutely yep absolutely. absolutely james andrews my friends this guy has some incredible work you need to go and see his stuff right here at uh, the the arena we're at the montana expo park and we're here for four days so if you get the chance you really should stop by and see all of the amazing work that he yeah. does so and not to mention all the other amazing artists yeah some awesome artists yes yes and and some very close friends of ours too. yes absolutely so when you come here you're hanging out with family and we look forward to seeing you absolutely so absolutely we're coming you here on the podcast humongous thank you to johnson madison lumber for being a humongous support of the podcast and all the different shows that are involved in this please make sure that you hit that like button leave james a comment and check out his website check out his social medias thankfully it's really easy james and andrewsfineart.com is where you go to see this man's incredible work and then you may as well come here and see it in person because I'm telling you, I don't care how good yep. you take a picture it doesn't make any difference, you got to see it in person absolutely, so, absolutely more coming your way right here on the podcast, thanks guys